of the things that you will quickly learn from our society is that when it comes to business, no one really has your best interest at heart. As long as you have what to offer, then all is well. It's simply how the world works. And in a perfect world, this should be okay. It allows us to distance ourselves from idleness and remain productive. But what if I told you that some entities take it a step further, exploiting human emotions like fear and hope, and capitalizing on the trust bestowed upon them? They have destroyed my future now. This is a story of how insurance companies are ravaging our society, one person and one family at a time. To begin with, I'll narrate to you three short stories. Number one, towards the end of the global recession in 2009, my friends and I had what you'd call a windfall from a series of side hustles including gambling. It was our Form 6 vacation and we had all the time in the world. We decided to enter the Boda Boda business and bought our first motorcycle. And using our classroom knowledge, we thought it prudent to insure our business with the Nick Insurance Company. Three months later, our motorcycle was stolen. We took every possible measure to work with the police, collected all documentation and ran to our insurance company for a Recovery. The insurance company instantly refused to honor the claim, insisting that we should have installed a GPS system. We tried to argue our case, but to no avail. In 2018, a close family friend visited I said to collect his maturity value after the 10-year period had elapsed. To his dismay, the insurance company paid him less by about 10 million shillings, insisting that the policy had not performed well, despite what he had been consistently promised over the years. In much recent memory, another friend of mine, let's call her Karen, lost her job during the COVID-19 pandemic. She had an insurance policy with Prudential and having wanted to withdraw the policy, she waited for a few more months for the mandatory three-year waiting period to elapse so as she would get back her money. Immediately the time period elapsed, she put in the application to surrender the policy. Out of the 14 million shillings that she had saved with the insurance company, she was told that she would only be paid 7 million shillings. In other words, she would be losing 50% of all her savings. The 50% charge was said to be at the administrative and other costs. Different circumstances, different companies, same outcome and different economic periods. An undeniable pattern of how insurance companies handle their clients regardless of the outcome of the contract. I'm going to take you on a journey to fully understand this pattern. I have talked to a number of insurance victims, searched through articles on social media, the Google Scholar articles, all newspapers, heck I've even turned the entire YouTube upside down. And this pattern keeps leading to this one conclusion. The insurance business model is designed not to pay out. And perhaps, hopefully, at the end you will be sharper than these modern day corporate mafias. People tend to hate the banking industry, but little do most ever get to know about its more subtle and evil cousin, insurance. However, before we get into the cutthroat business of these insurance mafias, it's only fair we understand the concept of insurance, what insurance companies really are, and why we invented them in the first place. I know what you're thinking, but you and I know that that's only textbook knowledge. To put it bluntly, insurance is the annoying necessity that we all pay for to ensure that we don't end up in massive amounts of debt if our house burns down, if we crash our car, or if in general something tragic happens. Basically, insurance is supposed to help us maintain a peace of mind amidst the world of uncertainties. This is a mandate given to insurance companies to hold. However, in terms of claims, these insurance companies do not automatically pay out when you have a crashed car, a burnt house, a dead spouse, or whatever tragedy that is. They will investigate to make sure you are not trying to defraud them. And this is only fair, right? This is where the problem comes in. Insurance companies are designed not to pay out to the people they are supposed to protect in the first place. And the reason lies in their business model. Let me explain. These companies offer a guarantee for a risk that may or may not occur. And the other party, you in this case, pays a certain amount or a premium for the protection against that risk. Why does this work? Simple. Human emotion. Fear to be specific. The fear of dying and leaving your children uncatered for. The fear of crashing and messing up your car and potentially killing someone else. The fear of your house burning down and going homeless the fear of anything with a combination of poor health death and property destruction it is no wonder that this is a huge business and in our modern day society any fear can be insured against when a huge number of people do the same thing for the same risk the probability of the risk happening is spread out thin among these so many people that if it happened by say one in a thousand people the cost would be for lack of a better term negligible hence the profit so what happens when insurance claims are more than what they had anticipated arising from a natural 
disaster like a hurricane destroying property on a large scale or a pandemic killing off millions of people. Thing is, these companies also know that such occurrences are possible and protect themselves from such through overly complex contracts that most applicants may never even read, or even if they did, would not fully understand the implications. The real winners against these mafias are the clinics and hospitals. Health insurance is one product that seemed profitable but not fully tapped, hence the aggressive drive for it in recent years. Insurance companies onboarded a huge number of medical entities and other big corporations like banks, stating that for a small premium, their clients and staff would enjoy the benefits of a peace of mind concerning the health of their families and themselves. Sure enough, almost every hospital and business that could afford the premiums was signed up and therein lay the problem. It worked, exactly as the insurance companies sold it. Remember when we said that that insurance companies are designed not to pay? Well, now there was a problem. People were taking full advantage of the facility. For example, a young professional would max out their maternity bill using the most expensive locations like Nakasero Hospital. Others would take unnecessary checks just because they could, and neither would hospitals mind helping their patients max out their insurance benefits. And as predictable as laughing at a cabby lame joke, the insurance companies ganged up to stop the program under the claim of foul play, hence the breach of contract, affecting tens of hospitals and clinics, especially in Kampala. Well, people had full knowledge on how to use the health insurance. Your perception of what insurance companies are really depends on where you stand relative to them. If all you know is what you are taught in class, it's likely you have a favorable view of them, because the system is supposed to validate the reason for having set them up in the first place. If you have a running insurance business, it is likely that you have a favorable view of them, because you want to believe them to be good. They give you peace of mind, and as should anything bad happen, hopefully they will come through to your aid. However, if you have ever put in a claim or ended your policy with them, chances are that you would snap them out of existence because of the way you were treated. Earlier we touched on the idea of how people tend to defraud insurance companies through false claims like arson, suicide, or just plain holding back sensitive information during the application process. Like taking out a life insurance policy when your doctor said you have only months to live and concealing that fact. But what if I told you that insurance companies are no better? In fact, they are masters at playing the dirty game of defrauding their customers. Here are some of the ways that that happens. The waiting game. Typically, insurance companies don't stipulate the time it will take them to pay you when you put in a claim. This is usually expressed by claim clinics and hospitals whose patients pay using insurance cards. Evidence rejection. In cases where the payout is huge, they will either connive with investigators to reject the evidence or again just delay the process enough to wear you out and possibly give up because the legal process is even costly. Complicated contract arrangements. This is where most retail clients are crushed. On the surface, you will be fed with the sales language of how much money you will make when you invest with them, how much tax you will avoid on your earnings. <laughs> Eliminate the bank. We can, I can help you. Eliminate the bank. Invest the money straight with insurance companies and earn 8 to 15 percent in Magoba and pay zero tax. I told you they're going to live in benefits and I need to use general life insurance policies. Why the language is different on paper with pages of complex scenarios whose implications you would never understand or be able to acquaint yourself with without the help of a lawyer. This is why you will hold a car insurance policy for years but when your car is stolen, you receive no payout because you did not install a GPS tracker. Or your house will burn down but you receive no payout because your house did not have fire sprinklers installed. Or you fail to receive a payout from your spouse's life insurance simply because they committed suicide, even amid this overwhelming evidence that they had deteriorated in their mental health. The deleted contract. The contract document you sign is very different from the policy document that is sent over to you. All it shows are a few highlights from the actual contract, enough to keep you excited. False protection. Insurance companies are also known for pushing their sales agents to shovel down policies onto customers when in reality there is no scenario where a claim would be honored. For example, running a campaign among staff of central police station or military barracks to buy life insurance policies. So why do people go ahead and blindly buy into these policies? Simple. These companies very well know that in the moment when their agents have successfully 
used the tactic of fear and omitted key information, potential customers have already emotionally invested a lot in them. The crazy part is, even agents do not at times fully understand what they are selling. To be clear, no life insurance policy has served that much interest even in the past five years. The scenarios are endless. Perhaps even you're watching this video and have experienced a unique frustration with your insurance company. The company that was supposed to be a safety net but didn't just fail to come through. They just refused. With all these scandals happening day in and day out, you might wonder if there is no supervising body to regulate these mafias. The Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda is tasked with maintaining the safety and sound operation of insurance players, protecting the interests of policyholders and insurance beneficiaries, and ensuring the supply of high quality and transparent insurance services and products. In other words, when you have a problem with your insurance company, they are the guys you report to by email, where they come in as the arbitrator between you and the insurance company and listen and influence on the case. Problem is, not so many people know about this, and for those that do, usually lack the luxury of time to have a legal battle against the well-resourced mafia. Why others just simply lack the trust for the regulator to act in good faith on their behalf, given how corruption scandals have ravaged our society in modern times. Others, surprisingly, just don't come forth because they are ashamed. The last thing you want for your family and friends to think is that you are played, or that you lack the mental capacity to understand the contract. Rarely do people come out when they have been embarrassed because it's only human to want to maintain your integrity. And remember, some of the people that you will tell will blame you for your shortcomings against the insurance company, because these companies are marketed as responsible entities regulated by the IRA. But a bigger reason why your friends would crucify you is this, self-interest. They want to believe that those insurance companies would never offend their clients. They don't want to believe that something like that would ever happen to them. Interestingly, the potential red flags of the regulator's weakness in supervising the industry might be seen from their website's poor grammar and the wording in their downloadable policy documents that seem to show them leaning on the side of the mafias. Unlike banking, the insurance industry is still very young and small in Uganda, and these regulators seem not ready to piss off the few players that they have. But perhaps what's more tragic is that IRA runs on the assumption that Ugandans understand how really insurance works. We all applauded the success of bank assurance in Uganda. But behind the curtains, it's clear that people would rather deal with banks than directly with insurance companies. While they may not seem so different, banks are more accountable to their customers. Remember my friend Karen, who was finessed by Prudential Assurance of Uganda? Well, she was able to report her case with IRA, who took up very fast and given a hearing where also Prudential was called in. This is an extract from that meeting. If I had lost my job one or two years into the policy, there is no way I would be depressed over your decision not to pay anything. And that's because that consequence was explicitly explained, verbally, in the documents, and even online. I would, for lack of a better term, die in my own movie. But then, here we are. I made sure the three-year time period was reached long after even I had lost my job, and you decided to cut off half of my contributions, and then you say that I should have known because of your broad term that says I would lose some money upon surrender, I promise you, carry out a survey among your clients, or even among your own staff, and people will say that those are penalties probably in the couple millions only. And would you blame them? You take away a person's contractual capacity the moment you decide that the information is withheld. It is secretive, because everyone I talked to about this was shocked, including the very agent that sold to me the policy. So, let her come around and say, oh by the way Karen, since you've now decided to surrender, there is this metric even approved by IRA that we normally use and this is how much you will be getting. That's not right and that's not fair and you all know it, you don't need to be on this side of the aisle to understand the unfairness. It's a con and you are taking advantage of the trust and reputation you have in the marketplace. Do you really think I would complain if this was told to me before onboarding? Even if you only took me through one scenario of like carry, if something happens and you fail, you might still lose a lot of money. In 5 years, it might look like this. In 10 years, it might look like this. That would be sufficient enough even if it was only verbal. And maybe, just maybe, out of fear you presume it would then cause you to have lost sales, but then you would be undermining the returns on brand loyalty. When I was told I would get interest rates of as high as 10%, it was also disclosed that this was not guarantee, as some years it may be less. Did that stop me from accepting Prudential? Instead I appreciated the honesty and was on board, and seeing the low interest rates from the computations that you sent over, I wasn't mad, because it was disclosed that the 10% interest was only potential and not a guarantee. In our Zoom meeting last week, 
It felt like I was being lectured to than being heard. I regretted the call. There was zero empathy. And that's not a sustainable business model if you're not going to start making responsible contracts where you not only show the good side of the contract but also the negative side if or when things go wrong. And you ought to know this. You are risk experts. It would only show that you actually care about your clients and business. I can only imagine how many lives are destroyed because of this tactic because not everyone has the time or even knows about seeking redress from the IRA or the courts of law in reporting such contracts. You are supposed to add value into the market, not pain. Avoiding responsibility and failing to acknowledge the mishap on your part sends a bad signal into the market to your potential clients, among it my family, my friends, their friends, and even myself because I know my current situation is only temporary. Simply put, your actions in how thus far you are choosing to go about this are not prudent. I am well learned and integrity is among my strong values. I know when to take responsibility for my shortcomings and to be honest, whichever way you look at it, this isn't how you ought to treat me. Even if my current decision to surrender unfortunately isn't well aligned with yours. As I finish, am I saying the metric you guys adopted is wrong? Probably not. There is a lot of brains behind it. Somehow it enables you to stay in business. My concern is, why? Why would you hold back such key information? And when things backfire for your clients, that's when you bring it up. Along with a lack of empathy like I'm just some statistic. You may not personally know me or your other clients, but I promise you that's not how things are done. It's impossible to have a clean conscience with the way you're onboarding people. As to the insurance regulatory team, I appreciate the speed at which you took up this case. Frankly, my friends and I were impressed, but I'm not asking you to defend me just for the sake of it. That wouldn't be regulating. I'm only asking you to see this for what it is. Both of you owe the market fair business practices. Business runs on the speed of trust. If we can't have that, then before God and Allah, whom are you guys really serving? That's all I have to say. End of extract. Okay, you probably are asking, how come we never taught this in school? Well, that's because you were taught by sales agents, not teachers. To teach means to impart wisdom from experience. Problem is, our lecturers and our teachers have no real experience, respectfully saying. They teach insurance but have never taken out an insurance policy. They teach business but have never run a real business. They teach law but have never set foot in a courthouse. They teach music and drama but have never led a real drama production. You owe it to yourself to understand these things not to get destroyed. Now, is insurance a bad thing? Well, that depends. If you have a child and want to ensure that their education continues in case something took you away, please take out an insurance policy. But even then, have your lawyer read through the entire contract before signing up. Things like that, but car motor insurance are a mandate to have by law, so you have no choice in the matter. <laughs> Yes, so zo musoro bagabana banene mu government ina kyeyamba bate ka umaliansi mbigabwe kufuna munga government neto ina kyeyamba obedere eva ko be musabaze but on things like saving and investing it doesn't matter if an insurance company is offering you crazy interest rates don't do it it's not worth it you would do yourself a lot more benefit if you invested those premiums into bitcoin isa or the stock market the average annual interest rate that insurance companies actually pay on your contributions or savings is 3 to 5% covering the inflation rate. The average annual interest rate that the stock market actually pays on your investments is anywhere from 8 to 15 percent. For cryptocurrency investment, that is anywhere from 15 to 20 percent at least for the top 50 crypto assets if you just hold up. Maybe things would be different if we had serious regulators but the corruption and general incompetence has severed the system so badly it's a joke that they even exist in the first place. Tetsuko also wants the insurance register authority board to be disbanded for incompetence and all the money collected be refunded to the consolidated fund. Now now do with that information what you want. As always, thank you for subscribing and leaving a like. Sure, let me know what your thoughts or experiences are from the comment section below. The issue of uh, procedures, some people have, have raised uh, complaints that the procedures are very, um, they take long to have uh, their claims settled.